This evening I'm going to try to tell you a story of what it was like to spend a year in a swamp. Um, and I'm going to do it through the concept of lessons learned. Now I am borrowing this idea from a video that a dear friend shared with me by an Admiral William McRaven, a retired Navy SEAL that some of you may have heard of or even seen the video. And his speech really inspired me and changed my perspective on this project and to some degree on my life. So uh, with that, I'm going to kind of go into it. Now I'm not nearly as eloquent as he is, nor are my lessons as profound, but I hope you enjoy it. Every step counts. Um, the journey of a thousand miles truly does begin with one step. When we started this project, we realized we were under, um, it was a big deal. It was a big, challenging project. We weren't sure how to do it, so we did our research. We called engineers, contractors, boardwalks throughout the country and asked, how do we do this? And we got advice ranging from get a team of horses to renting helicopters, which Christian looked at me like, really? Um, uh, but in the end, what we decided was really the only practical solution and what turned out to be one of the wettest years we'd had recently and compounded by some very industrious beavers that the only way to do it was to do it by hand. So that's what we did. Um, it wasn't fast and certainly was not easy, uh, but it was effective. I like the photo on the right, uh, that's TJ. He was a temporary worker we hired. And at one point uh, he stopped and he turned and he looked at me and said, really, this is your best idea? <laughs> and I said, uh, yes, son, one step at a time, uh, one piece at a time. Um, now don't worry, I'm not gonna sing. Uh, my fifth grade music teacher informed me that I couldn't hold a tune in a bucket which I was excited about until my parents told me that was not a good thing. And uh, so that ended my musical career at 11. We can let Abby do the singing, all right? Um, be creative. Um, Barney Fife would say, have some pioneer moxie, because we'd be in a swamp and we come up with problems all the time that have to come up with a creative solution. Um, the cart you saw on the previous slide worked great for the tear out, but not for the rebuild. The lumber was just too big, they wouldn't fit, and we had to get around some tight turns. So we had to come up with a way to do it other than by hand. So one night I had this image pop in my head. Um, the one way to do it is to use, like the fire trucks, you get around tight corners, you can steer at both ends, so we had to find a way to build the cart. And so that's what we did. Um, we built a cart, it worked really well, took a few prototypes, but it was a way to get the material out on site. It took two people, but it took two or three people just to set the frames. <laughs> Face adversity with a smile. This was a tough lesson to learn, uh, and the swamp kept teaching it over and over again. Uh, when you pull up to your job site and you're faced with this kind of flooding, it's hard not to be discouraged. Uh, to know that everything is wet and covered in mud, and that you actually have to go find some of it because it's floated away. Um, and to know that it's going to be that way for weeks on end because it's going to take a while, as you guys know, for that water to recede. And then when it does, it's just all muddy and mucky. And in the summer, you're going to be covered in mosquitoes and leeches, or in the winter, it's going to be ice. Um, and so I lost a lot of crew members. <laughs> some I think are still in the swamp. But, uh, <laughs> But the guys that were willing to endure were great. And they would not only show up, they'd show up with a smile. They'd take a piece of plastic and it's raining and they'll make a poncho out of it. Um, we would have to put on our waders every day, which were cumbersome and bulky and not very fun. And uh, you feel kind of weird in them. But you'd smile. And then you would go get in the water in the middle of February and they would give me a thumbs up and smile. And I can't say enough of how great it was working with those guys. It became kind of a challenge, a badge of honor to be out there and find a way to, to deal with it and get through it. And um, as Churchill said, never, never, never give in. Expect the unexpected. This really did happen. I pull up one day and a pony comes running down the road to me. And I thought, gee, thanks, John, I got a pony. Um, and I can see the headlines now. Come to Bean Blossom Bottom to see the wild ponies. Um, so sometimes it's a nice surprise, but other times it's heartbreaking. Whoa. A tornado, really? We just opened a week ago. I mean, I expected a flood, but not a tornado. Um, but you have to brush yourself off, take a deep breath, call your friends, grab your tools, 
and go to work. There's no other way to do it. Um, you just have to deal with it. And if you know Spider-Man, you give him a call so he can get up the top of the tree. <laughs> Together we can. A project this big takes a lot of people. Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. From the original trailblazers that built the trail at the beginning, uh, that they're still involved today, to the crew that helped with the tear out, to the crews that helped with the rebuild, to all the volunteers, staff, members, donors, whether you were there a week, a month, a year, or whether you were behind the scenes sending us your money or your support and encouragement, you all made it possible. A project this big takes many hands. <coughs> keep your head up. I mean that literally. As a longtime coach, I'd always tell my players, keep your head up to see what's going on around you. In life, it's easy to get tunnel vision, to keep your head down and lose sight of why you're here and what you're trying to do. But when I would take a moment uh, to get my head up, I would see things that would remind me of why I was there. I would see the red-headed woodpecker. I would see the bathonotary warbler. The orchids. The frogs. Lots of frogs. And then I saw it. The bittern. I'd heard it all spring. And I would catch glimpses of it fly off in the distance, but this time we were face to face. We locked eyes, and I felt a connection to something bigger. I felt like I'd finally been accepted in his world. I think he was thinking, does he see me? How do I get rid of this guy? He's here every day. <laughs> but this was my moment, my reason why. And that's what the boardwalk's for, is to give people a chance to get that connection to find their reason why. And it's a, a way for kids to get that experience. Education is so important to conservation because these kids are the future leaders of tomorrow. And they'll only protect what they care about and they only care about what they know. I want to leave you with a quote by one of my favorite authors, John Muir. Everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and give strength to the body and the soul. The boardwalk certainly strengthened my body, but more importantly, it continues to heal and strengthen my soul. Thank you.